In this video, I'm going to show you a comprehensive rehab program for calf strains, including exercises and guidelines for returning to running and sport. Your calf muscles primarily consist of the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The gastrocnemius has medial and lateral heads that attach to your femur, while the soleus originates lower down on your tibia and fibula. Both insert on your calcaneus or heel bone via the Achilles tendon. Their main action is to plantar flex your foot. However, the gastrocnemius also helps flex the knee since it crosses this joint. A calf strain can occur to one or both of these muscles. There are a few characteristics which differentiate the two. A gastrocnemius injury usually has a sudden onset that presents with localized pain and often occurs during quick movements such as sprinting, cutting, or jumping. You might say it felt like a sharp, sudden pain in the back of the leg. In contrast, a soleus injury typically has a gradual onset with poorly localized symptoms that you might describe as tightness or cramping. These often result from activities like long distance running. In either scenario, most calf strains occur from doing too much too soon. Did you decide to start playing pickup basketball three days a week after being relatively inactive the last five years? Or did you suddenly increase your running mileage in preparation for an upcoming race? To put it simply, there is likely a discrepancy between the load you place through your calf muscle and your capacity to tolerate and recover from that given load. The goal of rehab is to gradually improve your capacity so it's eventually greater than or equal to the loads experienced during running or your preferred sport. Therefore, exercises will focus on improving various performance attributes necessary for these activities, such as strength, endurance, and power. This includes progressive loading through knee straight and knee bent heel raises and plyometric and power exercises. Regardless of which muscle you strained, the exercises you perform will be similar. The primary differences in rehab for gastrocnemius and soleus injury are considerations during return to running and sport, both of which I will discuss after reviewing the exercises. Let's begin by reviewing a progression for knee straight heel raises. Start with double leg heel raises from the floor. Once you can complete three sets of 25 reps through your full range of motion without pain, progress to level two, single leg from the floor. Your goal is three sets of 15 reps on each leg, again, through your full range of motion without pain. If you meet this criteria, progress to a deficit single leg heel raise for three sets of 15 reps on each side. And finally, level four, which is the same movement, but now you will add weight. Perform for three to four sets of six to 10 challenging reps on each leg. Other knee straight options include variations that have a horizontal and lateral component. This can be particularly beneficial if your sport involves rapid acceleration and cutting. For horizontal, put your foot on a box or bench in front of you, and for lateral, place it on an object directly to your side. Then perform a heel raise on the down leg, leaning slightly towards your elevated foot. Start with body weight, and once you can complete three sets of 15 reps on each side, progress by adding weight. You can perform either of these for three to four sets of six to 10 reps on each leg. Next are two progressions for knee bent heel raises, a variation which will bias your soleus muscle. Progression one is a seated variation. Start with a seated heel raise from the floor. You can add weight using dumbbells or a barbell. Aim for three sets of six to 12 reps. If you can perform these without pain, increase the range of motion you move through by placing your feet on a step or plate. Perform three to four sets of six to 12 reps, progressing weight as tolerated. Progression two is a standing variation. Level one, double leg from the floor. Stand on two legs, bend your knees, and perform a heel raise while maintaining a bent knee position during each repetition. Once you can complete three sets of 25 reps, progress by performing the same movement on one leg. Your goal is three sets of 15 reps on each side. Level three, deficit single leg knee bent heel raise for three sets of 15 reps. And finally, you can progress to the final level by adding weight. 
Perform for three to four sets of six to 10 challenging reps on each leg. If you have access to a seated heel raise machine or a Smith machine, these are both great alternatives for performing knee bent heel raises. You might even find that these allow you to maintain better control as you progressively overload the movement. To maximize desired adaptations for both heel raise variations, you want to make sure you're executing these exercises optimally. This means you're performing a controlled tempo from start to finish and are maintaining even pressure on the ball of your foot. Common mistakes include rolling off your big toe and your ankle moving outward as you rise up, clawing the toes into the ground, and poor eccentric control, or in other words, lowering down too fast. Keep your toes pointing straight ahead, squeeze your calf muscle at the top of the movement, and move slowly throughout each repetition. If you are unable to perform the previous level one heel raises secondary to pain, try starting with an isometric variation. These involve contracting the calf muscles with little to no ankle movement. Pick one knee straight and knee bent variation and aim for three sets of 30 to 45 second holds until you can tolerate the level one exercises. With some severe calf strains, you might not tolerate any weight bearing loading. Therefore, you may need to start with a non-weight bearing exercise like resisted ankle plantar flexion. Perform for three sets of 20 to 25 reps until you can tolerate isometrics or the level one heel raises. The final category is power and plyometric exercises, which will follow a general progression from vertical to horizontal displacement and from double to single leg. Prior to starting these exercises, you should first be able to complete the level one heel raise variations. Here are two progressions. Progression one is hopping. Place your hands on your hips and perform quick jumps while keeping your knees relatively straight. Focus on spending as little time on the ground as possible. Level one, double leg hopping in place. Level two, double leg forward hopping. Level three, single leg hopping in place. And level four, single leg forward hopping. For all levels, aim for three sets of 60 seconds without pain. If achieving 60 seconds is too challenging, start with a lower time. However, you should be able to complete 60 seconds prior to progressing levels. Progression two is jumping. Focus on achieving triple extension each repetition, meaning your ankles, knees, and hips are fully extended in mid-air. Level one, vertical jump. Level two, horizontal jump. Level three, single leg vertical jump, and level four, single leg horizontal jump. For each level, you want to build up to a maximal effort. Aim for three sets of eight reps for levels one and two, and three sets of six reps on each leg for levels three and four. Again, you should have no pain during these exercises. Depending on your sport, you might eventually consider other exercises that have a lateral component, such as lateral hopping and jumping. In addition to calf specific exercises, you should strongly consider implementing these other exercise categories if time allows. These will address other possible deficits seen in calf strain injuries and help prepare you for the demands of running. To strengthen other foot and ankle muscles, you can perform band resisted ankle dorsiflexion and inversion for three sets of 20 to 25 reps on each leg. For balance, try a single leg RDL to a knee drive or standing trunk rotations for three sets of 30 to 60 seconds on each leg. Finally, for compound lower body strength, there are endless options you might consider. Squats, deadlifts, lunges, hip thrusts, etc. Choose two to three variations to perform each week and aim for three to four sets of six to 12 reps. In terms of stretching, it is unlikely you will need to implement specific exercises. Typically, dorsiflexion range of motion deficits that present following a calf strain will either self-resolve with time or with the previous exercises. If you still want to include stretching exercises, that's completely fine, but I do have two recommendations. One, these should not be painful. You're looking for a stretch sensation, not discomfort. And two, Cast specific exercises are your priority. You can still stretch, 
but it should not take time away from the other exercises. Before reviewing exercise programming, I want to answer two common questions regarding calf strains. The first, do you need imaging? Research looking at other lower body muscle injuries suggests MRIs do not provide additional value over a thorough clinical examination. Furthermore, complete healing of a strain on imaging is not necessary for clinically successful return to play. While imaging might be used in some situations, for most people, rehab is gonna be primarily dictated by symptoms and function, not imaging results. And the second question, when can you return to running or your sport? Before you can return to your sport, you need to run. And before you can run, you need to pass certain tests. Green et al. suggests meeting these three criteria prior to running. Adequate calf strength as demonstrated by a single leg heel raise, tolerance to repeated hopping on a single leg, and absence of clinical signs and symptoms. There's not one accepted benchmark for calf strength and repeated hopping, but generally you should be able to perform about 25 to 30 single leg heel raises through your full range of motion and demonstrate 10 to 20 single leg hops in place without pain. Once you can achieve these milestones, you can initiate running. As of now, there's not one set protocol for return to running following a calf strain, but here are six rules of thumb from Green and colleagues. One, run on alternate days to start. Two, avoid prolonged, slow, continuous running early, especially for soleus injuries. Three, do not progress volume and intensity on consecutive days. Four, run before the calf loading exercises. Five, running progressions should meet the demands of your sport. For example, don't run excessive mileage if you don't need it. And six, avoid sudden changes in conditions such as the surface and footwear. These authors also outlined a return to play checklist. A lot of the criteria will be similar for all calf strains. However, some are specific to the muscle injured. For example, since gastrocnemius injuries usually occur from high intensity activities, drills focusing on accelerations, cutting, jumping, maximal velocity, etc., should be a focal point prior to returning to sport. In contrast, soleus injuries will focus on total running volume since these usually occur from cumulative overload during long distance running. For programming, at the very minimum, you should perform the heel raises two to three times a week, progressing through the levels based on performance and pain tolerance. For example, you might perform a knee straight variation on Monday and Friday and a knee bent variation on Wednesday. Once tolerated, include hopping and jumping exercises and perform these prior to the heel raises. You can do the hopping progression Monday and Friday and the jumping progression on Wednesday. Other optional exercises can be included if time allows. For example, after the hopping and jumping, you can perform squats, deadlifts, and split squats as your main compound lift. Then you can perform other ankle and foot strengthening exercises and the single leg balance to end your workout. When you meet the criteria to begin running, ideally you will run on the days you do not perform the strength exercises. If you have to perform them on the same day, complete the running first. Also, it's important to continue performing the previous strength exercises even after you return to running in order to help reduce the risk of re-injury. In summary, a calf muscle strain can occur to one or both of your primary calf muscles, the gastrocnemius or soleus. There are distinct differences in their mechanism of injury and clinical presentation. However, rehab principles for either injury will be similar. The goal is to improve various performance attributes by targeting the calves through a comprehensive program two to three days a week. This includes isolated loading through knee straight and knee bent heel raises and plyometric and power exercises, both of which will help prepare you for the demands of running and your sport. Prior to running, it is strongly recommended you're able to perform at least 25 to 30 single leg heel raises through your full range of motion and demonstrate 10 to 20 single leg hops in place without pain. 
If you strained your gastrocnemius, you should place additional emphasis on sprinting, acceleration, and cutting drills prior to returning to your sport. If you're recovering from a soleus injury, avoid prolonged, slow, continuous running early, and gradually build up your total running volume over time. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, do us a favor, tap that like button, subscribe, and even turn on notifications. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop those down below. Until next time.